Hyrule Warriors is making its way to the Switch this spring, bringing it one step closer to invading every Nintendo system in existence. Oh, you're next, Wii. The move to the Switch is not that surprising, considering how big the Zelda franchise is. Put Zelda on anything these days and it will sell out in a matter of minutes. That's right, amiibo, t-shirts, socks, chest, uno, cups, lamps, toilet. Plus, with the Switch's success, it's another opportunity to get Hyrule Warriors into the hands of those who skipped the Wii U. S sorry Wii U, I'm just gonna take that from your grave. Of course, this isn't the first Musou game to release on the Switch. And if you speak Japanese, you have several options to choose from. Omega Forces just pumps them out! There's even a Nintendo-themed Musou game ready to play on the Switch right now. Unfortunately, I don't think Fire Emblem Warriors has sold nearly as well as it could have, despite Koei Tecmo saying they're pleased with sales. As of 2018, Fire Emblem Warriors has sold more than 320,000 copies worldwide. Not bad for a Musou game! Until you compare it to the Hyrule Warriors 1.26 million. And that's just the Wii U version. To be fair, Hyrule Warriors had a few things going for it that Fire Emblem didn't. Like I said before, Zelda is a powerhouse franchise. Fans who have never touched a Musou game before quickly gobbled it up because they slapped Link and Zelda on the cover. That would be me. You could say the same thing happened to Fire Emblem, only on a much smaller scale. As far as Nintendo IPs are concerned, Fire Emblem is still a niche franchise, so the fanbase is not nearly as large. Another factor was the timing of release. You want to know why so few people bought Fire Emblem Warriors at launch? Because Super Mario Odyssey came out the next month. Clearly, the jiggle physics were better in Odyssey. The only thing competing with Hyrule Warriors the month it released was the record-breaking Kick Beat Special Edition. I'm surprised Hyrule Warriors sold as well as it did with this competition. Mm. There are a lot of potential reasons why one sold better than the other. But is the real underlining factor here that Hyrule Warriors is better than Fire Emblem Warriors? I'm not so sure that's the case. To find out, let's go over some key elements, the good and the bad of both games. As always, I won't spoil anything major, aside from the rosters, but if you haven't played either game, there may be some minor spoilers. As far as Musou games go, there's nothing incredibly deep about either game's combat. It's the typical button-mashing, combo-performing onslaught that drives the series. While there are ways to add more combos through skill trees and equipment, it just adds other buttons to mash in simple patterns. In order to make fighting a little more interesting, unique characters with unique movesets and skills that set them apart from the other characters. Hyrule Warriors does this pretty well. Each character brings with them their own style of fighting, meaning that no two characters play the same way. Plus, some characters have the option to use different weapons, broadening their appeal. Of course, not every fighter matches their movesets perfectly. How dare you, my tingle! Yeah, but at least Link is cool. Breath of the Wild DLC, here we come! Fire Emblem Warriors, on the other hand, struggles to differentiate between its cast. I hope you like swords. And waifus. Obviously, their designs are different, but the same weapon users feel like copies of each other, particularly the three Pegasus Knights units. To be fair, each character still has slight nuances and fancy attacks, but it's more or less the same. That's not to say Fire Emblem Warriors is boring to play. When Fedric shouts, Pick a god and pray, before unleashing his devastating blow, it sends chills down my spine. Pick a god and pray. Well, well, let's see. I've never really thought of that before. <laughs> um, well, we got Derma or, or Mila. Well, those two, uh, can't, uh, you know, I think I want to go with Mila on that one. <laughs> but wait, let me think about it. No, wait! The combat is still fun, if not a little repetitive. And even Hyrule Warriors struggles with the same repetition, despite its unique movesets. However, Fire Emblem Warriors does have some other things going for it combat-wise. The weapon triangle and partnering up with units. I wasn't sure how well these Fire Emblem staples would translate, but Omega Force did a fantastic job bringing them to the Musou world. The weapon triangle acts as a rock-paper-scissors system, where one type of weapon has advantage over the other. Basically, button mashing your way through the enemy may not work every time. You can't depend on one sword character throughout your playthrough, unless you want to slowly chip away at enemy health. 
The triangle encourages you to try new characters and teams for each situation. Partnering up adds on to that because your partner can help out with any disadvantage you might face. Also, the special attacks you land when teamed up are amazing to watch. Fly, horsey, fly! These are welcomed improvements to the Musou combat, but are bogged down slightly from the unoriginal fighting styles. In the end, Hyrule Warrior's unique movesets outweigh Fire Emblem's weapon triangle and partner system ever so slightly. There's more to gameplay than just combat, however. It's the overall experience while playing that makes or breaks a game. In that case, Fire Emblem Warriors does a fantastic job of streamlining missions and objectives for the player. Instead of feeling overwhelmed with every new detail that pops out on screen, each mid-battle update is clear and direct. It even pauses the game to let you take in important information. Hyrule Warriors lacks that simpleness and instead barrages the player with notifications sometimes too quick to read. Now, some of my confusion may have come from my lack of Musou experience. However, when I picked up Fire Emblem Warriors for the first time, I felt a sense of relief after I triggered a couple of submissions. The mission starting. Oh my goodness, I know what's going on! I was able to plan and take it all in without feeling overwhelmed. With Hyrule Warriors, I couldn't handle everything that was happening on screen. I gotta get the whale, but I gotta stop that boss, but the enemy is about to take my base. <laughs> yep, mm hmm. That's my anxiety kicking in. The chaos at some moments was too much for me, and I'm glad that Fire Emblem Warriors was able to rein it back a bit. Another part of what makes Fire Emblem Warriors a better experience gameplay wise are the strategy elements. While the game lacks in variety of playstyles, it makes up for in the ability to switch between units mid battle. Spreading out your units that way makes completing missions more enjoyable. You always have control of the situation, even with three or four missions to complete at a time. Strategy also plays a role before and during battle. Surveying enemy units before a battle in order to pick the right team is crucial to securing victory. You know, I haven't played as her yet. Looks good to me! During battle, you can also use the classic Fire Emblem grid system to command your allies away from danger. It allows you to properly strategize, instead of hoping your units fight the right enemies. In comparison, Hyrule Warriors is less about strategizing and more like Go on, get him! In the Wii U version, you were stuck playing through the entire chapter with one character. I love Link and all, but the HIAT <laughs> gets a little annoying after a while. And if a mission pops up on the other side of the map, you have to run all the way over there without getting distracted. Wait, 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 hold, hold everything! I hear the spider. That's gonna annoy me all day. Quick, quick, find and squish it! It's not a huge problem, especially with free mode, but it did needlessly add panic to my playtime. However, the boss battles in Hyrule Warriors are superb. Fighting other famous characters is one thing, but actually knocking the crap out of infamous Zelda bosses adds an epic challenge that Fire Emblem Warriors sometimes misses out on. In fact, Hyrule Warrior enemies and maps in general pay better homage to its original series. It's almost like looking at a Zelda collection art book filled with nostalgic moments. Unfortunately, Fire Emblem goes down the route of bland and generic when it comes to enemies and maps. Although it has its moments. Some of these moments come in history mode. This mode gives you a chance to revisit famous Fire Emblem scenes and unlock more characters. While these maps are limited to a handful of games, they're still enjoyable and straightforward. It really made me appreciate the memorable highlights of each game, like Awakening's in-game and Korin choosing between his or her family. Hyrule Warriors has a similar mode and tries to play with your nostalgic heartstrings, but falls flat in its execution. The interface is, unfortunately, too busy for its own good. The history map certainly resembles the NES Zelda look, but the map progression feels tedious, convoluted, and complicated. The missions are fine overall, it's the map that I have a trouble navigating. All in all, I enjoy the gameplay in Fire Emblem Warriors more than Hyrule Warriors, even if it is by the smallest of margins. Musou crossover games are meant to be a celebration of a franchise, a chance for players to experience the franchise's history. Veterans should enjoy playing as characters from across their favorite games in the Musou style and remember some of their favorite gaming moments. Newcomers as well can experience part of what makes the celebrated franchise special. To be completely honest, Hyrule Warriors succeeds tremendously at this. 
while Fire Emblem fails to properly represent the franchise. It boggles my mind how many characters and games are represented in Hyrule Warriors. We got Twilight, Xenoblade, Duckface, Perfectly Normal Dude, a runway model, whatever Xant is, Darunia, a boat, Ravioli, the bird girl. Chances are your favorite characters are here. Let the Groost loose! Sure, some of these are DLC, but at least they added them eventually. Seeing so many famous characters in one game made Hyrule Warriors feel like a tribute to the entire franchise. Unlike Fire Emblem Warriors. Instead of celebrating the entire franchise, Fire Emblem Warriors focuses on the bookend games, Shadow Dragon, Awakening, and Fates. They almost completely ignore every game that came in between. We're lucky enough to have Lin and Celica included in the game. But what about Hector, Eliwood, Roy, Arya, Alm, Boyd, Nephany, and a ton of other fan favorites? Not even Ike, the best character in the franchise as voted by the fans, is anywhere in the game. I understand why they went with the games they did, and I don't dislike the choices. Except for maybe Uchiha Sasuke over there. Betrayal! It's a betrayal! What gets me is their refusal to include anybody else. Now wait a minute! It's inevitable we'll get more characters! Even Hyrule Warriors had to wait for the 3DS version to include Wind Waker characters! And that was inevitable! Stop complaining and wait for the inevitable DLC! You old fans always complaining about the inevitable matters are what makes the Fire Emblem fanbase so toxic! You keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. One, I am very much a newcomer to Fire Emblem. Awakening was my first game, actually. <laughs> so the whole old fan argument doesn't apply to me. That said, I want to see characters from Fire Emblem games I haven't played. I want to see why they're loved by other players. Fire Emblem Warriors doesn't give me that chance. Two, what's so inevitable about it? Is there any indication we'll get DLC characters from games not featured in Warriors? I find it unlikely, unless the game ends up selling as well as Hyrule Warriors. Now, we already have DLC packs out for Fire Emblem Warriors with a third one coming in March. However, a third of these add-on characters, namely Oboro, Owain, and Navarre, are technically already in the game. You meet them in the story mode, but they don't join your party as playable characters. In my opinion, it's a sad attempt to grab more money from the player, especially with Oboro. Her and Azura are the only non-flying spear characters in the game, and that variety shouldn't be locked behind paid DLC. Maybe one, but not both. Shut up, you big baby! Okay, rant over. Sorry if I got a little too passionate. I'm just disappointed when a game like this misses its true potential. On the other hand, I'm glad Hyrule Warriors was able to effectively celebrate many of the games in the Zelda series. Can you stand? Big Brother! Together, we can do anything! I've been known to say that Hyrule Warriors' story is a glorified fanfic, where the character's MC falls madly in love with Link. I could probably read to you a script from Zelda fanfic online, and you wouldn't know the difference. Even then, it's better than the boring, predictable plot of Fire Emblem Warriors. I know I shouldn't expect much from a crossover Musou game, but this is just sad. Aside from the three or four fanfic characters, none of the Fire Emblem characters matter beyond the chapter they're introduced in. The most of the canon characters add to the plot is cheering on the warrior characters Liana and Rowan. We can do anything we can do our friendship. <sighs> to add injury to insult, the game literally copies scenes and scenarios from Awakening and Fates to tell the story. Maybe I shouldn't be shocked by that. Maybe that's the way Musou games should be. But it comes off as lazy. Why not create a world where all the kingdoms live on the same continent? Maybe the Awakening Kingdom and the Fates Kingdom are on the brink of war, while the Radiant Kingdom and Blazing Kingdom are trying to stop a rebellion. Then, Aetolis, the made-up kingdom, can be the connecting link between them all. Okay, maybe that just sounds ridiculous, but at least there's some creativity in the idea. Worlds randomly converging is a lazy attempt at story writing, in my opinion. I'm looking at you, Fates. That doesn't mean Hyrule Warriors gets a free pass. Oh, no, 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 no. Sia and Lana's love obsession with a certain mute warrior screams fangirl. In fact, the entire script must have been written by someone who had the hots for Link. Although, who could blame them? Mm. I understand the main audience for the crossover are die-hard Zelda fans, but this is too much. Do we really need a Link Shrine? I already have, like, three of those. 
At least Hyrule Warriors tried to tell a somewhat original, albeit laughable, story about the Legend of Zelda lore. In the end, I think Fire Emblem Warriors is the better game, particularly because of its improved gameplay and how much fun I had with it. I enjoy switching through characters and the strategy it brought to the table. However, in my mind, Hyrule Warriors is the better tribute to its series, and thus the better Musou game. The cast alone puts Fire Emblem Warriors to shame. Look, I hope Koei Tecmo and Omega Force prove me wrong. I hope they give Fire Emblem Warriors the cast it deserves. I just don't see it happening. Oh well. At least I can play as my favorite Zelda characters. Chris. Let it be known, I'm a fan of both these games. And I'm glad we have these crossovers to begin with. It's a chance for fans to come together and celebrate their favorite franchises. Sure, not everything is perfect, except Inoka, but neither are the games they come from. If you haven't played either of these games, I highly recommend you play if you're a fan of the series. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, check out our recent podcast episode about the Switch anniversary. Also, please consider donating to our Patreon account, where you can get rewards like getting videos a day early for pledging as little as $1. Check out the link in the description below. Goodbye, you good people.